What on earth is on your head, Lissy Cundy? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Ascot, darling. I'm in the royal enclosure. I will be seeing the wonderful King Charles and our Queen Camilla later on. And I'm, well, I'm dressed for the occasion, obviously. You look fabulous, may I say. Fabulous. Now, OK, so I want to start with this question that I asked, whether, he, whether it's a smart move for, for uh, Harry and Meghan. It sounds like they're talking about potentially having somewhere to stay or living or moving or in the UK. Now, what, what do you think about that? Well, it kind of beggars belief because they were the ones that wanted to leave so desperately this country and have their own life, like eating avocados and yoga on the California beaches and wanting their privacy. And now suddenly they want it back. And this is a big sign that they have lost all popularity in the States. I mean, who would have thought it? I think even Meghan Markle thought she was going to be the next president over there, the way she was behaving and speaking. And sadly, Nana, they've lost faith. They've lost trust over in the States, let alone here. So, I mean, I don't know how they're going to be welcomed back here. I think it's going to be very tricky. But they know the way they make their money is through the royal family. And they've lost, the, you know, everything to do with the royal family. So being back in England is the only way forward. And let's not forget, if President Trump, it could be the possible President <laughs> Trump, comes into office, Harry could be in quite a bit of trouble. Well, yeah, and it would be quite embarrassing as well. Um, but, of course, this weekend we had Trip in the Colour, which was amazing. And, of course, in my view, Kate was the star of that show. The fact that she even was able to show up and be there even under what she's been going through. And, of course, Meghan and Harry, Meghan launched some jam and dog biscuits. <laughs> I don't know what that was Well, about. yes. Um, I mean, let, let's just say, first of all, Princess Kate, the whole world was watching to see her and how incredibly stunning, fragrant and, and beautiful did she look. Um, and we, were, we we haven't seen her for seven months, Nana. I mean, it's not since Christmas 2000, you know, 223. We haven't seen Kate. Mm. Where has she been? We've all been so worried about her. And, you know... The sad thing was, I thought, what will Meghan do? We have Kate there, you know, we've been waiting to see her for months and months, worried about her health. And then Meghan, four hours before Trooping of the Colour, um, is launching dog biscuits, which is really something else. Um, her friend, his name's Nakos Freiras, who is a polo player, uh, posted about these new dog treats with beige bows, with the Meghan, you know, typography. It was all very Meghan-esque and uh, you know as well as her jam um, they were posting four hours before celebrating King Charles official birthday which for me seems pretty desperate. It is desperate and I can't imagine any PR company would suggest that you do that so I, I would I suspect her PR probably said don't do it and she ignored them and you know how she's always looking for another PR because they keep uh, abandoning her or she keeps firing them or whatever so uh, she gets through them perhaps she just doesn't listen and uh, a trip of the colour also known as the King's Birthday Parade as, as we know uh, very successful despite uh, Prince Harry and Meghan not being there and of course it was uh, Father's Day um, on the Sunday that must be quite sad. I wonder, I we haven't heard any rumours of whether there were any Happy Father's Day messages. I suspect there may well have been. But it is pretty sad, isn't it, that both of, both parts in that equation, Meghan and Harry, are estranged from, from their fathers, as it were. Well, they, they, yes, they both are estranged from their fathers. And I thought it's very poignant that Prince William sent this beautiful post with mm. him and his father saying Happy Father's Day, just W with a kiss, very simple, but, you know, just shows the bond they have and the respect he has for his father. And there is Harry, very noticeably absent. Let's not forget, this is a 75-year-old man that is suffering with cancer, going about all his duties. They're trooping off the colour. He was there standing in the pouring rain and you just think, wow, this man is absolutely incredible. He is everything, sadly, that Harry isn't. 
how he does uh, seem to have lost the plot and how hurtful indeed not to even send a Father's Day message. I mean, we don't know if he did it privately, but, you know, we think n normally, you know, Meghan and Harry are, v are very vocal. They're, they're posting about jam, now going to mm. be dog biscuits. Can't post a Father's Day message. For me, mm. that is unforgivable. It, it is a bit, and I don't really understand what it is all about. I wish they would all just just get some makeup, for goodness sake. Life is short, and illness and all sorts of things come in the way, and you don't things that you don't expect, and, and you know you, you don't want to find yourself in a position where you wish that you'd said something and you hadn't. But I thought it was very yeah. odd that um, it seems that Gwyneth Paltrow and Meghan Markle are quite close and friends. Or, I mean, just from what we're getting here, uh, but she did. Gwyneth did post her support for Kate which is a bit awkward. Yeah. Well, Meghan Markle wants to be the new Gwyneth Paltrow. She's desperate to be there with this lifestyle guru, being all, all things cool, being with the new cool jet set in California. The problem is the cool jet set don't want to be linked with Meghan. She doesn't realise what she's done, really, by slating the royal family, the, the, the nasty lies she's told about our Kate and King Charles are just unforgivable. And America actually loves the royal family so much. And I think, really, Meghan has really shot herself in the foot here. And I think if we, you know, there is no comparison between her and Kate, but then we look at Kate. She's going through chemotherapy. She's mm. suffering with cancer, but then she was looking so wonderful you know you saw that a touching side where she was with her children and there's little Louis Lovely. who always sort of steals the thunder what's Louis going to do next and she she you know puts her on her lap she's such a wonderful woman mother and everything we admire and she has a real sense of duty sadly everything Megan hasn't got and I thought it, it it was really mean of Megan to even post on this day to even you know dog business it's for goodness sake um mm. and and she's going on with this brand because she's desperate to be linked with this sort of you know Gwyneth Paltrow set cool set she you know she wants to be the next sort of like like the Obamas but sadly it's not going to happen and I think slowly they're beginning to realize it that's why they need to come back to England but whether mm. they'll be welcomed is another matter Nana well, she, she might argue that she's trying to make a living. She doesn't want to sponge off the royal family. She wants to make her own way. And what, what she says about Kate would be from her own eyes. So her truth, as it were, well, that phrase was coined during that disastrous Oprah uh, Winfrey interview, which I love Oprah, but this I found slightly unsavory and almost unforgivable. But yeah, we, we shall wait and see what happens with all of that because, uh, uh, Trump, the elections in America are in November. And uh, if things go the way that the, the polling is suggesting, then Trump will be their president. And I think, think it'll be fascinating to see what happens to the, the Markles or the Montecito Mungners. Uh, Lizzie Cundy, thank you very much. Always a pleasure to talk to you. That is the brilliant Lizzie Cundy.